Hi, this is Frank Tulak. I'm here before a ceremony. I just want to take the time because I've covered already the problem with translations and the problem not understanding the cultures. So right now, before we begin the ceremony, which I'm very honored to be a part of, to be directing it, facilitating it, but understanding the difference between a marriage of the Bible and our current concept of marriage. When, we, when people get married, he is marrying her, she is marrying him. But that's not the way the Bible describes it. The Bible describes it as, as a commitment to God. You first prove your level of commitment by His Word, so you see. You see, everybody says, well, how do you know there's a God? It's like, well, how do you know there's a United States government? How do you know it exists? It's either in the country of the United States or out. If you, if you travel to other countries, you may not, you may hear of, when you're in other countries, you may hear that there's the United States, but you never really see it until you're in it. You see, being in it, then when you leave it, you recognize the difference. If a person has never been in the United States, they don't understand until they've been there. Same with every country. So a government and a country you don't know until you cross the border that things change. So it is when you make a commitment to God and you keep that commitment, that level is called salt. And as you continue, then it becomes the mantle and then eventually the blood covenant. So the salt covenant is the most important. And I have a man and a woman that have committed the last three years and have really put forth maximum effort to stay within that covenant of salt and to, to see from God's perspective, to accept His reality more so than their own. And they've seen the difference. You see, when a person, if I say a whale, and I used to go, I was on a board a ship for a long period of time, and we'd be, we'd all knew what a whale was. You learned it in school. But there's something about seeing it within a stone's throw away. To see an eye is, bigger than your face coming out and looking at you, to see the size of a creature so big, then you say, okay, now I know there's a whale. <laughs> well, the same thing with God. It isn't, you can, uh, people can criticize and see from a distance, but until you're in it, you really don't really understand. Now there's, there's culture that has teachings and that's wonderful. I'm not criticizing any religion. That's, that's what people need, that's what they want, and that's what they have. But I'm not talking about what men say. I'm talking about the truth of God's Word. So when we go to the Word, it will not make sense until you do it. No one understands why anyone should get married. It seems absurd. Why should you give up half your time or most of your time for someone else and receive nothing in return? Why would anyone want to be a parent? It makes no sense. Yes, it does. But until you do it, until you have that commitment, you don't have anything. So what the Word of God is talking about is a commitment. And as you get to, to carry out this commitment, God becomes just like that whale coming out of the ocean and looking. <laughs> You're like, wow, there really is. <laughs> it becomes a real. So the more committed you make, the more you see it, the more everything falls in place and makes total sense. But until you personally experience it, it's only hearsay. It's only something that you've heard about. But let me tell you, the difference between saying there's a whale and actually being within stone's throw away from it is the difference between hearing about the true God the Bible and actually living it and seeing and being a part of Him. So let me explain what's going on. They both made a commitment to God. She is now going to be the XO. He's the captain of His, his world, bringing it under Christ. She is going to bring her will under Christ by through Him. So it's kind of like a captain in a ship and the XO, and everything we brought under that. Or, if you wish, the president and the vice president. It's kind of like a car. 
if you're in a car, how many steering wheels should you have? Should everybody in the car have a steering wheel, an accelerator, and a brake? I think not. Well, how about just two? No. <laughs> that is also a bad idea. How many steering wheels should there be that are in operation? One. There always has to be one. If you have two, there's confusion. So please try to understand the truth of God's Word. Get to under know God. See the, how real He is and be able to receive life greater than you've ever imagined. But it comes not by knowing. It comes by doing. So God bless you. i got to continue to get power. It's going to be a wonderful ceremony. They're making the next level of commitment, which is He to oversee and protect and guard and help her become the greatest she can be and she to help him be the greatest he can be. The two together accomplishing things they never imagined. And that's what's available for you. God bless you. I gotta go.